Okay, welcome. Just to be sure, this talk will be in English. Yeah. Okay. Um, welcome to understanding and using hooks in WordPress. I want to like I want to use this uh, talk to show you not only what hooks are, but also when you know them already, here is some some tricks that you might uh, use when you um, use existing hooks, but also create um, your own hooks um, in a plugin or a theme, for example. I'm Thomas. I'm a developer from Germany. I'm also a little bit of a freelance developer, but I um, have found my own company. Um, we publish websites and we monetize them with ads. Mm -hmm. And I also wrote a plugin to do this to optimize ads on websites called Advanced Ads. You can find it on WordPress.org. And most of my examples here come from my work as a plugin developer. Okay, imagine you have any kind of problem in WordPress. For example, you have the idea to automatically capitalize words in your headline. For example, instead of lorem ipsum, in small letters, you want to write it automatically large because you always forget to do this. You search for something in the internet and of course you find the solution on WordPress.org or something like this, uh, Stack Overflow. And it reads a bit like this. Uh, yeah, you only put this in your functions, PHP, and it's like add filter, OK, whatever. It looks really strange to you. But then, well, you search for a plugin, of course. Yeah, a plugin can do this as well. And you find some uh, plugin that does exactly this. You install it, it works. And a few days later, you, you're interested, maybe because of my talk now, you uh, look into the code, and you see this. So what I wanted to say with this example is hooks are everywhere. So if you don't know hooks, you should definitely uh, get into it. I hope I can motivate you uh, to, uh, to also to help you to understand them. Um, without hooks, WordPress wouldn't be what it is, in my opinion, as a developer, because it enables all this, I don't know, 30,000 plugins or more um, to change something, some features, add features, without you hacking the code. So it's really, in my personal opinion, the basic of the success um, here in Hooks. Another example, if you didn't start to use Hooks, um, you're already using them in plugins. And there, if you're a theme developer, like not only as a plugin developer, they are important, but also as a theme uh, for themes. This is uh, um, the Genesis uh, framework, you probably know. Um, it's just my test environment switched to Genesis, so it's, very, it's not very inform uh, informative. Um, but the cool thing about Genesis is that they also use many hooks, and they allow you to, to add something. For example, you want to add a logo above this title, and there's a plugin that highlights these hooks, and uh, all these orange areas are hooks. So they are there. You can use them yeah, when you want to change things like that. So just to give you an impression what, that there are hooks everywhere. And yeah, as I said, hooks are cool because they allow you to change anything. I recently visited a, a <coughs> Typo 3 meeting, and I was listening to them complaining that every time they want to change something, they have to hack it into the core, and then they only have to copy it next time they update. And it was like, OK, it sounds really frustrating. Um, as a plugin developer, it's, uh, hooks are also cool because they allow um, your probably technical advanced users to change things without having an option. So if you have a plugin or theme, you probably know that many people come and they have feature requests. Um, and in my own plugin, I just added a lot of hooks, and then I tell people, OK, you can use this hook. I have documented them. Um, and for example, in order to, to add a new ad type or whatever. So hooks make you um, flexible and also react uh, easier to react on people, uh, people's requests. And yeah, you open your plugins to others. So uh, my plugin already has six extensions that people can use. And it's possible because I have so many hooks. OK. I'm repeating myself, saying hooks, 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 what, uh, are, what, what does it mean? There are two types of hooks in WordPress, actions and filters. Actions, so whenever you read action, it means that something 
can be done. Some, mostly it's output, it's some echoing, echoing some content. And then there are filters. And filters are meant to manipulate a value. Um, the problem is also what might be a reason why many people don't start with hooks because they see um, a lot of things and it's confusing because there are three elements in a so-called what I call hook routine that are sometimes al always called hooks. So every element is called a hook. Even in, in <coughs> um, the core documentation, um, they are not very consistent in how they name things. So let me try. There are these three elements. You have the hook. It's the, well, the, it's placed where this hook should happen. Then you have a, an action or filter function. It means what is going to happen. And you have to connect both of them, which is hook as a verb. So you could say actions or filter functions can be hooked to an action filter hook. I don't know if it makes sense, uh, but I will give a better example now. So this is what, what it looks in code, these three items. Do action is in terms of an action routine, the hook, which uh, or better here in this example, it's a hook called Genesis site title. Then you have a function that is executed. I spare you some more detail, but I have examples later. And then you connect them with add action. Yeah, and add action, it has four arguments, up to four arguments. Uh, first you take the, the hook name and then the function you want to connect it with and then you have a priority and um, an argument, uh, the number of arguments, I will come to this later. So this the hook routine in terms of uh, for an action always has these three elements. And the problem is they are not like here in this nice example always at the same place. Yeah? The do action can be hidden in core and the function can be defined somewhere else in a plugin or in your own code, and you can make the uh, add action call in your functions PHP, for example. But um, yeah, if you want to analyze a hook routine in an existing one, always search for these three elements. Here's an example from core using, um, using do action. Uh, if you go to a default theme, for example, 2015, and check out the, oh, can you read it? Okay. Uh, check out the header PHP file where all the header code um, is defined. You will always find WP underscore head function. And if you click on this function in your development tool to see what is inside, you see this one, it's there's only a comment and this is the only thing interesting in this function. The only thing that's actually there and it's just calling uh, the WP had um, hook. So they could also put this directly here, but maybe it would confuse people. I don't know. Um, and it's not just waiting there for someone else to be used, but also used by core already. So this is an example from core using the WP underscore head uh, hook. It, for example, this adds the title tag. This is relatively new now. Um, scripts, style sheets, the, the no index uh, meta tag that search engines sh should not index it and so on and so on. So there are already <coughs> many hooks uh, used by core in this section. If you want to extend WP head, just use one of these examples as a template. Yeah, this is how uh, an action, uh, a hook routine looks for filters. It's slightly different. You don't have do action, but you have apply filters. And very important, you don't, you not only have the hook name, in this case the title, but you also have a value you put into it because you want to filter something. Yeah, you filter the title and then you return it, of course. You need to catch it somehow. You also have a function. In this case, uh, I made it up an example. It will actually capitalize the letters, the example I had before. And um, then you don't have add action, but add filter, which connects both of them. Yeah. The interesting thing is um, add filter, add action are the same, like if you look into how they are uh, in the source code. And there are many other functions that are actually the same. Normally the, the 
the, the action function calls the function that is defined for filter. But uh, so you can actually exchange them. Yeah? You could add action here, use add action, and it would also work. But well, you shouldn't confuse them because uh, it will make it hard for others to read your code. Yeah, it's for others it's easier when they know what a filter is. Let's say read add filter or add action. But th technically they are very similar or the same. Okay, and this um, is also an example from Core about using the content filter. Um, the content is also something that is used and it should be used in every theme. If you go to your index.php, post.php, single.php, whatever template file, you should find uh, the content. And you should find it because uh, this is the definition of the content. The important part is here, that the content is uh, received. And then the filter, the content, <coughs> is applied to the content. And uh, my plugin, for example, um, can automatically, automatically inject ads into the content and themes that don't use this the content function, but some decided to use just get the content and echo it, then it's not working. And it happens with a lot of, a lot of other plugins that add something to the content, like, like similar posts or share buttons. Um, they are all based on uh, the content um, and on this filter. And core as well. So there are a couple of uh, um, filter functions defined uh, in core that use the content hook like uh, texturize or w auto p, which adds the p tag to every paragraph automatically. It converts smileys as well. Um, okay, here are some practical um, um, things if you want to uh, put your own hooks into your plugin or theme. The first thing about how, how do you name them? And my suggestion is to if you have an, an action hook, to call it like the position where it is, like for example here before output. Yeah, everyone who reads it, for example later when the the connection with uh, add action is made, everyone who reads the name can get an idea where it is. For filters, it's similar. It's just adding the the value that you actually change. So it could be content before output. Yeah, so people would would understand what it means. And because of uh, filters and actions are so similar, you should never um, use the same name for an action and a filter. Yeah. Because it, it would collide, it would be the same um, internally. Yeah, and you should also prefix it. So my plugin, I would probably call it advanced ads before output or advanced ads content before output. So everyone would know um, for example, if uh, for theme developer uses this in a functions PAP, a PHP, everyone who would read it would understand, okay, it's probably working together with this plugin called advanced ads or something like this. Or you could put your name in it so people know that you put it there. And it also provides or it helps uh, to not have uh, collisions with uh, maybe similar hooks or like hooks with the same name that are core. There is also some cool idea you might not think about. It's dynamic hook names. Core is doing this uh, in a couple of places. Here in, um, there is an action uh, that is um, fired when uh, a post status is changing. So for example, from you change a post status from pending to published. That's quite popular. <laughs> um, then it fires this hook, which uh, is built from the old status to new status. Could be pending to publish. Yeah. So the problem, you need to ne know this, because sometimes when you search for a solution and you find a forum post and saying, yeah, use this, and then you, you check your source code, where it is defined, to no learn more about it, you won't find it. Because it's pending to publish is not directly defined. So maybe knowing this would help you to yeah, find such patterns as well. And there is something similar for, for filters. Um, this is when you call get option. Uh, there is actually a filter um, with option underscore and then the name of the option. So you could change everything that is in the options um, table, like the default category or something on the fly, which is pretty cool if you, if you need it. <laughs> 
And then there is the all hook. So there's a, a hook uh, called all. And um, it's just um, triggered for, for every hook. So every hook that is okay, um, that is that gets executed um, will also call this uh, function connected here with all. So you could echo the current filter, for example, or the current action. It's re it's really just for debugging. It's I don't know a, a use case where you would use it in a um, in, in well when not debugging. That's good to know. Okay, then you have the function that you define. There's also, uh, my first advice is to prefix it. So my is common, you find often my in, in some forums, but you should do something like your name, your real name, or so that people as well understand who wrote this function and that it's not colliding with uh, existing functions somewhere else. And you can also put your, um, your functions into a class. So then you have the prefix in the class name, and then you ha just have uh, the, um, the function in the class, and you call it um, with um, the class and uh, the, cl uh, the function name in an array with add filter or add action. It's the same. And you can go a bit farther, further if you call or uh, add your filter or your, um, your action within the class, you can use this instead of my class. So this is all in, in, the, in the codex, so you don't need to remember it. And this is also, um, well, good to keep in mind. What I, the example I had was return UC words, like the capitalized words can actually be shortened uh, into this, because UC words is actually like, it's, it's a function, <coughs> it's already there in PHP. Um, it accepts an argument, the title, and it returns it. So exactly what every other filter uh, function should do. So if your function looks like this, you can uh, just shorten it because you, you don't need to define a new one if it's already existing in PHP. Yeah, then there is this, uh, the third argument. If you add filter, I always skip this now because it's, uh, um, it's optional, by default it's 10. And you need to know that a low number gets called first. So if you have, like before we had the add filter, the content, and there are many in core already, um, they always have, or they all had, I think they're the 10 priority, which means they run in the order where they, when they are defined, if they have the same priority. But you can also change it. For example, if uh, you use the same filter, but you need um, it uses, yeah, use the same filter, but you need the output of a filter that ran before. So, for example, um, the content wrp adds the p tag to the, the content. And if you, in my plugin, I had a feature, or I have this add injection feature, and I once made the mistake that I called it before wrp, which means um, this was based on the p tag, but if the p tag wasn't there yet, the ad didn't get injected anywhere. So this is, can be a problem. Um, yeah. And then this is one of the most difficult topics, in my opinion, or it's the arguments. So if you have a do action or apply filters, um, you can add multiple arguments. So do action can have no argument, but it can, but it can also take a lot of argument that you can later use in your function. But in order to be able to use them in your function, you need to define the number of arguments your function accepts with the add action or add filter call. So this is, again, this is the hook name, this is the function name, this is the priority, and then you have uh, this argument I forget it quite often because it really, it makes sense, but it's like, it's disturbing somehow. Um, yeah, so this is, um, and it doesn't have to be the number of arguments that the hook actually um, gives to the function. So here is, uh, you can get four arguments, 
but the function just decides to use the first three, so you don't put a four in it, but a three. Yeah. So this is, it's easy to, uh, to forget this. And then you get a warning, of course, so it's not doing something very bad, but uh, yeah, need some time to get used to it. Okay, then, so you know the, the basic routine, there are a few other functions that might be interesting to use. This is remove action and there's remove filter as well. They are, again, uh, the same in terms of code. This is an example that was popular um, when 4.2 came out, when the emojis uh, were supported and everyone complained because the, the support code was added also to the front end and blew up the front end code. And uh, yeah, if you search for a forum or a plugin, you found uh, this code which just removes uh, the actions and filters that were added on multiple uh, locations uh, that supported the emoji code. Yeah. So you can use, like using your hook knowledge to actually remove features. Yeah, then there are functions that you can use to, um, to test hooks. If you, for example, like this is a function that creates the title tag in the header. It's also since 4.2, I think it's in core. And it checks if WP action was called before and is called right now. This is a bit of a double check. So you actually you would only need this because this also is true when, when this is true. Um, and I checked and they remove, they will, they will remove this check in 4.4, so it's no use to remember it. But just for the sake of the, arg um, the example for having a did action and doing action there, and that you can use them to check um, if this function is called within a specific hook. And there is something similar for filters <coughs> as well. Um, well, it's just similar. In this case, they are very different. Has filter means um, that, th in this case, the query string filter, um, this function checks if there are functions um, defined to it. So if there was an add filter call with query string, then this gets executed and else it doesn't get. So you can find this in codex, don't worry. And uh, yeah, some debugging tips. What I like to use, especially with filters, where it's always returning something, if you do debugging there with some echoing also, you can actually make some bad output and uh, it could, well, ho hopefully not destroy your site, but uh, especially if you debug uh, um, um, the filter for a query, an SQL query, you cannot just attach a value there. This will probably break, break something. So you can use error lock. If you don't know this, uh, we should definitely check first debug lock about debugging in WordPress. If you enable debug lock, it will write um, every, every error into a lock file that you can access in WP content. And it, you can trigger this also with error lock. So you write something into error lock, like an output of a variable, and you will find it in the uh, debug log file. So this is not just for hooks interesting, but for every debugging, for example, for AJAX functions as well, where you don't see the output directly in source code. And there's a plugin called debug objects. There are multiple plugins that you can use for debugging and also for, for getting a list of actions and filters triggered um, and defined. And I like debug objects that you can uh, use to find, like this is something, this is important sometimes to find um, conflicts between uh, when multiple functions are used for the same hook. Yeah, you can find the order, you can find which plugin is calling which, um, in which order to this uh, filter or action. Yeah, and as, as I said, you can find information in the codex. You can find also a lot of information in code. So <coughs> hooks are actually the reason why I started to read more uh, core and because they are, they are explained there in detail. Um, and sometimes it's surprising what you find there. So for example, there's a filter uh, function that uh, makes sure that WordPress <coughs> is always written with a capitalized P. 
try to write WordPress in a post with a, with a small p and then check the output and it's the filter working the magic there. Yeah, just search for something. You will find hooks everywhere, as I mentioned in forums. Um, and if, especially if themes or plugins de define hooks, they have normally have a, ma a manual for this. And in my personal opinion, uh, if you need a plugin um, or to make sure that a plugin is, uh, is from an experienced developer, you will probably have hooks for, uh, for it as well. Yeah, there are more actions and filters than you can think of. So always everywhere where WordPress does something, changes something, you will find a hook. So I'm not promising, but it's almost like this. And yeah, this was my um, short uh, presentation about uh, hooks. Um, let's see if you learned something. If not, uh, Thank you, and now is the time to ask me something if it was too confusing. It was, probably. <laughs>